Hello guys, Jack here from Peach Guitars. Today I want to do something we've wanted to do for quite a while now, which is to take a much deeper dive and a closer look at the Dr. Z Maz amplifier. The Maz is one of the very most popular amps that we do. Uh, we often get a lot of questions about it because we feature them quite heavily in our videos. So if you've seen any of our stuff in the past, chances are you will have seen and heard one of the Maz series of amplifiers at some point in one of the videos. So there's a few reasons uh, that we choose to use the Maz amplifier quite a lot and today I wanted to just try and explore some of those reasons and try and convey to you why if you're looking for one amplifier that basically can go anywhere and cover pretty much any sonic ground, the Maz is a very, very good contender for that spot. So the Maz is definitely capable of a whole wealth of tones, as I said, and like I say, if you have seen any of our videos before, most typically we're using it for like a clean bass tone on which I might layer pedals on top of that. So the, the Maz is an amplifier that takes pedals exceptionally well, but it's also an amp that can be driven really hard and you can get some really great classic uh, crunchy breakup all the way up to some fairly high gain tones too. And that's what I wanted to illustrate right from the top of the video. So I'm playing this custom shot telly plugged straight into the Maz 18. There's a stack of three here for good reason. I'll talk you through the benefits of each three of those amplifiers. These are basically the three um, most popular versions of the Maz amplifier. And from the start there, I was playing the 18 non-reverb version. So the reason that we've got three, and I'm gonna play you little clips of each, is because they do actually have slightly different characters. The one I'm playing is probably the most raw, and I think that Dr. Z actually terms it his favorite amplifier. Um, and for good reason, I think that this amp really, really helps you to, to kind of find your sonic character. And it really takes the, the character of whatever guitar you're playing, whatever effects you put through it, and just translates it into its own thing. Um, so I actually did have a little bit of an effect coming from the Line 6 HX effects on the floor, which I've got plugged into the effects loop of the amp. Dr. Z have started incorporating this into most of their amplifiers now, but the Maz was one of the very first to feature one of the Metro Zero Loss Tone uh, effects loop circuits, which is a great effects loop, fully tube buffered, and with the Mark II revision of the Maz that came about a few years ago, uh, this was implemented in that, and it really just makes uh, any kind of effects unit you want to use with this amp really usable. As you can tell, I had a really quite distorted tone there, all the gain was coming from the amplifier and I could use uh, an analog style delay from the Line 6 unit in the effects loop with no problems at all. It wasn't getting distorted, wasn't getting mushy. The other thing you'll have heard me add in there was the foot switchable variable EQ bypass boost that all of the Maz series of amplifiers have. So there's a socket on the back for a single button, a uh, single uh, control foot switch that comes with every Maz amplifier. And what it allows you to do is to bypass the tone stack of the amp that's feeding into the preamp. So basically it allows you to get a little bit more gain but what's cool is it's not just a simple on-off operation. The foot switch itself actually has a rotary control that you can decide how much of that bypass you want to actually come into your tone. So I was using it just for a bit of a fattener and uh, you might have heard it there at the intro. I'll try and illustrate it a bit more clearly so you can hear what it actually does. But it's a great way to kind of naturally give yourself a little bit more of the amp without coloring the tone. So that's a few of the features on board. Obviously this is the non-reverb version. There is also the 18 and the 38 which do have the option of having a spring reverb on board as well. I really like the tone of the reverb on board. They've really kind of, uh, kind of finely tuned it and sculpted it to the tone of that amplifier, particularly with the Mark II revision. Uh, if you want any more info on that Mark II revision, John and I did film a video probably about a year and a half ago now when the Mark II had just come out and uh, John very, uh, you know, went into great detail of all the different changes that came about with the Mark II revision. I'm gonna focus less on that today because that's pretty much commonplace now with the Maz amplifiers, but just know that they really took time and made some crucial refinements with the amp that made it even more player friendly. So as I say today, I just wanna to delve into why that is. So starting out with quite high gain tone on the amp there, I'm gonna play it one more time with this Telecaster and then I'm gonna start changing some of the controls, showing you the different approaches that you can take to using this amp and how I think that it really authentically sits in every kind of category of amp tone that you could possibly want to do, specifically in this kind of classic rock vein. It's not going to do like a kind of heavy, uh, you know, modern metal tone or anything like that. But just by showing you some of the different variants as well, the different power sections and stuff like that, you will hear that the amp is capable of a whole wealth of different tones. So let's play this tone one more time, then I'll start turning some knobs. <laughs> Thank you. 
So once again, I wanted to illustrate there what I think is the amp's probably its greatest strength, which is its sheer dynamic range. This is a term that's definitely banded around a lot in terms of the amplifier industry these days, but the Maz is definitely a figurehead of that kind of approach to guitar amplifier design. So I had a really high gain tone there with the guitar full up, and then just by turning down the guitar volume, I was able to get a really nice sparkly clean tone on the neck pickup. Granted, that is gonna vary depending on what guitar you're plugging into it. This is a Telecaster with quite low output pickups, so that dynamic response is a little bit more immediately noticeable. But the Maz delivers on that, no problem whatsoever. Any guitar I've ever tried through that amp, it absolutely nails that kind of approach. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about before I start manipulating the actual gain structure of the amp is probably the most important and crucial feature on the amp itself, which is the middle control. So rather than uh, most amplifiers, EQ sections, they, they can often be kind of a little bit neither here nor there in terms of being able to sculpt the character of the tone. You often can kind of roll off certain frequencies, um, particularly the high end and low end frequencies. The middle control though sometimes is a bit of a dud and you often find that you just leave it wherever you think it sounds best in the particular room that you're playing. On the Maz though, it's a really powerful control. Okay, so let me give you an example of what the mid-range control can do. All the tones you've heard so far, I've had the mid-range actually quite high, about two o'clock on the control. And it's a very, very thick sound if you want that kind of thing. So even with a, a bright Telecaster guitar, with an EL84 style amp, that often can be a very, very bright sound. The mid-range control allows you to really fatten things up and it actually takes the amp into more of a kind of Marshall style circuit sound, I would say. Uh, but the big powerful benefit to it is you can just scoop the mid-range and it immediately gives you a little bit more of that Vox kind of tonality. So let me really quickly illustrate that to you and I'll talk through a little bit more about why I think that's the case. So here's the mid-range at about two o'clock and then I'm gonna dip it to about 10 o'clock. So hopefully you'll have been able to hear there just how much that, uh, that really subtle change in frequency response actually makes a big difference to the way the amp responds. Suddenly you get all this high frequency content coming out and that kind of elusive chime that most people refer to when they're talking about this style of amp circuit. Now something else to note about the 18 watt versions of the Maz is that they don't actually have EL84s in the power section. With the Mark II revision, Dr. Z actually decided to implement a different type of power valve, which is essentially a military spec NOS EL84 by the name of a 6N14N power tube. And I think it sounds a little bit girthier, it's got a little bit more grunt to it, and it sounds a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more compressed maybe than most EL84s. Uh, the Maz 38 still has typical EL84s in the power section, which I think allows it to breathe a little bit more and offers you obviously more headroom. Uh, but the, these new versions in the Mark II of the 18 watt, I think actually really help to define the character of the amp. But like I say, just by playing with the mid-range control, it really does in impact the character of the amp in the way it feels and the way it sounds. So that's really important. I just wanted to highlight that straight out of the gate with a distorted tone. I'll play around with it a bit as well. We do some cleaner tones on the amp too, and you'll hear that you can really take this amp all the way from Fender to Marshall tones. So this really powerful control. Let's start looking at some of the others though. I'm gonna bring the mid-range back up to about one o'clock. Um, this amp again works a little bit differently to most conventional guitar amplifiers in the fact that you do have a three, ba uh, three band tone stack, so you've got bass, middle and treble, but you also have a cut control, which I believe kind of impacts the very highest frequencies in the power section. So it's a little bit like a presence, but kind of works counterintuitively, counterclockwise. So let me show you what the cut control can do, again, in this driven context, and then we'll start to move on to some of the different gain structures too. So I'm gonna start with it where it is at one o'clock, I'm gonna dip it to nine o'clock, and then I'll push it all the way up to about four o'clock, and you'll hear just how much impact that one control has too.
So once again, hopefully that illustrates just how subtle a control can be, and yet it really affects the way the guitar feels under the fingers. Uh, so some of these uh, kind of sensations that I'm describing to you may not translate over video, but I think most guitar players will recognize that when you change the sound of an amp like that, you can understand how it affects the feel. So it's one of those personal kind of um, subjective things, but hopefully you can at least hear what the controls are doing on the amp. So this amp has two inputs, high and low. I believe the low input basically um, uh, attenuates the signal by about three decibels, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. But actually, when I go for a clean tone with the Maz amplifier, I do like to use the low sensitivity because I think it actually not only reduces the gain, but you do get quite a reduction in the level of compression there too. So I'm gonna keep the amp at the same setting you'll have just heard, but just switch from the high input down to the low input and you'll hear the reduction in gain and the way that it cleans up the, uh, the overall power section tone as well, I think a little bit. So let's go, let's do that now. So I think that cleans the amp up quite a bit. It actually makes it a little bit easier to play, I find, because the notes are a little bit more pronounced with that less compression going on. Again, it's a subjective thing, but it's nice to have that option on board rather than just lowering the, the gain or the volume control. And also, th don't think of this as a case of you use your high, in, uh, high sensitivity input for a single coil guitar and the low for a humbucker. Obviously, you can do that and it will work very well, but I do think you can get some legitimately great tones using either or for any kind of guitar, really. So now we're back in the low input, let's uh, drop the gain a little bit so I can show you some of the cleaner uh, to break up kind of tones. Okay, so that tone illustrates exactly the kind of thing I tend to go for with an amp of this nature, especially if I'm playing a telly. It's that really big, bright, wide open kind of sound. And as I said, I'm still using the low input sensitivity. I've ducked the input volume right back to about nine o'clock and pushed the master up a little bit, as well as also pushing the cut and the treble up and dipping the mids a little bit. So that's quite a drastic shift overall, but you'll hear it's a drastically different tone. So one of the benefits of that kind of tone is that because it is so wide open, it makes a great platform for your various overdrive distortion and fuzz pedals and that kind of thing. But the gain structure works in a way by pushing the master up, I'm actually starting to overdrive the power section a bit more now. So it's that nice balance that a lot of amps actually struggle to get right, but I think the mass absolutely nails it. It's clean enough that I can play clean chords with the volume backed off a, a tiny bit on the guitar, and then wind it all the way up, play the bridge pickup, and I've got that nice edge of breakup tone. So let me illustrate that once more. I go from a clean neck pickup to a driven bridge sound. So that tone might be a little bit bright for some, and I would say that obviously you can just duck the control, uh, the cut control or the treble control back a bit. But I do like playing with that kind of tone and that level of top end, especially when the amp affords you it. And basically that's because it's very much a vintage amp sensibility that Dr. Z absolutely nail in their modern designs. It's not very often that an amp will afford you that much top end and have it sound sweet and natural. Dr. Z amps absolutely nail that. So it's great to know that you've got that on board, but you can always back it off if you want to. Speaking of, I've backed the cut control down to about 10 o'clock now, and I'm gonna show you with a little bit more clarity what the variable boost uh, with the foot switch will allow you to do. So basically it's gonna take me from that edge of breakup tone, push me up to a nice bit of crunch when I put the foot switch on, so let me show you that.
So yeah, the boost is a really useful addition to the amp and I think it's something that really just allows you to keep the core tone of the amp still there, but obviously just push the gain structure up in a nice natural way. Now while I've got the amp at this lower gain setting, let me just show you once more how powerful that mid-range control can be. I think you'll hear it in a little bit more detail now that the amp is cleaned up a little bit. So let me duck it back to nine o'clock. I'm gonna push it up to 12 and then I'll push it to three. And think of these as approximations of a Fender style tone. Moving to noon, it gives you that Vox kind of uh, classic chimey characteristic and then pushing it to three o'clock pushes the compression and the sustain up a bit more and you get more of that martial kind of bark. So let me show you those three tones. So once again, a subtle difference, but I do think it makes quite a big difference to the way that the guitar feels and responds. And I think that's a crucial way to approach when you're using an amp for pedals as well, because often with a Fender style amp, you have to, you feel you have to really drive the amp a little bit before you can use pedals with it, because otherwise it just sounds a little bit flat and, and kind of restricted. But just by upping the mids, it gives you that compression element that will allow your pedals to sound fantastic, even with quite a clean tone like that still. Okay, so I've talked you through most of the features and benefits of the Maz 18 amplifier. I'm going to show you a couple of different tones using the reverb version as well as the 38 watt version uh, with a couple of different guitars as well. But I really just wanted to skim through this amp with a Telecaster because it's the way I'm most comfortable uh, showcasing this fantastic amp to you. The last thing I'm going to do on this amp is just show you a really, really rich, nice, clean tone. I'm going to use a bit of harmonic tremolo and delay from the HX HXFX and then I'm going to jump straight to a much higher gain tone just using the same amp and I'll show you how quick it is to dial up those two tones so let's hear what it sounds like So that covers pretty much everything I wanted to say about the Maz series of amps. Absolutely stellar workhorse amplifiers. Uh, as I said, they will give you pretty much any tone that you want to get out of a classic amp. 
although they do have their own character and I think that's very important to stress. They're not just kind of a blank canvas with no personality like some amplifiers can be. The Maz series is very, very, uh, has a, a lot of history and lineage with Dr. Z amplifiers. Long may it continue. I can't wait to see what the Mark III revision brings about whenever that may be. But for now, if you're looking for an amp, like I said before, that basically can give you a little bit of everything, I think the Maz is one of the very best amps on the market out there. And I hope you've enjoyed the clips that you've heard so far of it. So I want to show you also the 18 version with reverb. I'm going to play some Strat tones on that. And I'm also going to play some Gibson tones through the 38 with reverb as well. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video, as always. If you want to find out any more info about Dr. Z amplifiers in general, or more specifically, any of the Maz series of amplifiers, do yourself a favor, get to peachguitars.com, check out the full inventory of Dr. Z that we've currently got in stock, and hopefully you'll be able to find one that suits your personal needs. You'll also be able to find high resolution images of each and every amplifier that we've got in stock there too, as well as get current pricing information. So thanks so much for watching guys, stay tuned, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers. Okay.